Hi, I'm Erin Melvin. I'm with Companion Care of Georgia. If you find yourself in the need for private home care, we can help. We have the custodial care, assistance in dressing, bathing, showering, medication reminders, hospice support, meal planning and preparation, light housekeeping. We also can assist you in taking you shopping and running small errands, assistance in appointments, transportation when needed, respite care for the caregivers, and we can also just be an enjoyable companion. We can also help you with Alzheimer's and dementia care. So call us at Companion Care of Georgia and we can help today. Call Don's Tent Rental for any event in your future. Everything from weddings, reunions, or backyard parties, there's no event too large or too small. Call Don Thompson today at 275-3586 or drop by our showroom for endless ideas. There's no other choice. For your next important event, call Don's Tent Rental, 707 Industrial Boulevard in Dublin. You're watching the Lighthouse Adult Daycare Center Alzheimer's Awareness Telethon on TV35. Hello everyone and welcome into the studios today. Meg Greer. Meg is here to talk to us uh, this month about uh, the effects of Alzheimer's in celebration of our telethon for the Lighthouse Adult Daycare for Alzheimer's. A lot of people are affected by dementia, uh, by Alzheimer's, Meg, we all know that and we love uh, that, that you are here for us to help us during this month to help the public understand. We're here to entertain, we're here to inform, uh, we're here to, to try to help you if your family faces uh, dementia or Alzheimer's. Uh, I'm sure uh, that's a scary word for you too. Absolutely. It affects so many of us and we were actually just discussing before we began that during the last several years I've really noticed more clients, more families affected by dementia and Alzheimer's diagnoses and so um, it's really important to me to speak to families about what they can do when they get a diagnosis like that to try to be as prepared as possible to give a little peace of mind. Yeah, yeah. You, you, I don't guess you could ever really be prepared but man uh, it hits sometimes very fast for people. Um, I, I would think, uh, Meg, you know, uh, if you first realize that something's going on with you, you would want to be proactive. Uh, I, I would believe I would be. Of course, you're going through a, a change, a shift in your, your actual mind, your, your cognitive skills. You, you don't know how fast it's progressing and we all want to hold on to, to what we can. I know in life you have to, but, but if you were to find yourself uh, in that situation. And again, I use an analogy I heard years ago. I, I, I kind of think it's humorous, but at the same time, it's applicable in that, you know, it, it's you don't have uh, dementia or Alzheimer's if you forget where you put your car keys, but if you forget you have a car, right. you might have, yeah, you exactly. might have a problem. And so, you know, there, there are people who go through it. We've seen instances of, of people who just write notes all over the place trying to hold on to some order. Um, but uh, usually a, a relative, someone close, child, uh, someone will realize it and it's a tough talk to have I'm sure. Absolutely. It's very difficult for families to broach that conversation if they're concerned about a loved one. Some things you might look for is beyond just normal forgetfulness. Mm -hmm. um, your analogy was a good one, um, but also maybe differences in time thinking that it's 20 years before and speaking about maybe deceased loved ones or things like that as if they're still living. Um, but things that we definitely notice would be more falls um, or, you know, uh, just for maybe not being able to come up with names for loved ones who they normally would always be able to identify, those type of things. Yeah. When families start noticing those things, it really is important to be proactive, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. So sometimes for the individual who's been diagnosed, that's a very difficult realization to make. Often in early stages of Alzheimer's and dementia, um, there is a change in mood, 
because they are starting to maybe get concerned of their own forgetfulness. Yeah. And so that can make them become very defensive mm -hmm. and sometimes even not willing to uh, go to the lawyer's office or you know fill out those documents because yeah. they're scared of maybe losing control. Mm. Um, so what I encourage families is let's try to have as open and honest conversation as we can mm. with our loved ones. What are your wishes? You know, if, if a loved one has been given a diagnosis, mom, dad, other loved one, what do you want to happen? Who do you trust to make these decisions? And let's get that documented on paper in the legally correct way so that if things progress, then we know what you want. You have the peace of mind to know we're going to be following your wishes. And we don't have to have the chaos that can sometimes take place when we don't have our wishes documented mm. and no one has been nominated to act on our behalf. Yeah, and we never know who will be uh, struck with dementia, with, with Alzheimer's. We don't know what we'll be struck with in life, but specifically when you start to, to lose those, those cognitive skills, uh, it would be so much better to come ahead of time. And could you uh, put in place a legal document that if I got to this point, this would take effect, but if I never get to this point, it doesn't? Absolutely, that's an excellent point. So um, if we're talking about re really being proactive, trying to get documents in place long before a diagnosis is even on the horizon, mm -hmm. we would absolutely want to execute a durable financial power of attorney as well as an advanced directive for health care. And speaking of that document coming into effect at a certain time, you can actually mention that in those documents. Mm -hmm. You can create what's called a springing financial power of attorney, meaning it springs into action when you need it, mm -hmm. and you can define what when I need it is. And so we can define in that document, well, I want my doctor who I always see to be the one that makes the determination that I no longer have the capacity yeah. uh, to make these decisions. Mm -hmm. Or we can even require two doctors, two independent doctors make there that determination. Go. So I think for some people that gives them more peace of mind to say, this is only going to be used when I need it, mm -hmm. but if I need it, it's there, it's yeah. in place, and I've named the individual that I trust to make those financial decisions for me. Yeah. Similarly with the health care directive, uh, it's also known as the advanced directive for health care, or many people refer to it as a living will. You can also state in that document if you want it to go into effect at a certain time. I don't generally advise that because like you said, you never really know what might happen. Yeah. But the great thing about a health care directive is that you can always make your health care decisions if you're able to communicate those. And someone in the medical field certainly can speak on that much more eloquently than I can. Um, but if I can say, yes, I agree to this procedure, then they're going to be consulting with me about what I want. But mm -hmm. if I'm not at a place where I can make that decision, mm -hmm. then I have listed individuals who I trust mm -hmm that would make the right decision for me and my health. And that's what's on the advanced directive for healthcare. Yeah, and uh, there are earlier ages that people are affected by this. So I, I would kind of consider that too, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in, in looking at who you trust. Uh, in, in some people's situation, it may be their accountant that they're very in tune with and that accountant knows them well enough. It may be their attorney, may be their lawyer and they know this is, I deal with them a lot, they know me well, I would want them to have say so. Or I guess it could be uh, family members if you, uh, if you chose it. And could you not choose, if you had three children, could you not choose all three to help and there would be a consensus? You can. Is um, that getting a little weedy? It can sometimes <laughs> get into the weeds and the logistics of maybe getting all the signatures or getting all the people to make the decisions. But it's not uncommon, yeah. uh, particularly maybe to have two, uh, two co-agents sure. to make decisions. That's fairly common. And then, of course, when we're talking specifically about health care decisions, I find that it is um, very helpful that if maybe all the children are listed or a combination of family members are listed that the client actually has a conversation with those individuals to say this is what I want now I know that's a tough conversation to have yeah. I understand that yeah. 
but the more openly we can communicate about what our wishes are, particularly when it comes to treatment preferences, if you're in a terminal condition, the easier it is going to make it on those individuals making those decisions at that time. Yeah, great advice. We're with Meg Greer. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. The way the world is today, go, 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 go. Things just seem so out of control. That's why the things we can control are so important. That's why we're members of our electric co-op. The whole reason the co-op exists is to bring us the electricity we need. So they look out for us. They invest in the best technology you can get, just to keep the power on. Not because they have to. They actually do it because it's the right thing to do. As we age, we face more physical concerns. Rehab Advantage in Sports Medicine can help you live a more pain-free life. Back pain, stiff joints, balance concerns, arthritis, and more. Rehab Advantage in Sports Medicine can help you improve your quality of life. Call for a free evaluation today, 478-275-1800. Rehab Advantage in Sports Medicine accepts referrals from your doctor. Or no referral is needed with direct access for up to eight visits. So call for your free consultation today, 478-275-1800. Rehab Advantage in Sports Medicine, 911 Hillcrest Parkway in Dublin. Or at Rehab Advantage Sports Medicine. Hi, I'm Perry Williamson, and we've been baking here at Williamson's Bakery since 1927. In 1965, my grandfather, Merle Williamson, hung our name on this bakery. Ever since then, people have been stopping in for the Williamson's tradition. We invite you to do the same here at 1634 Veterans Boulevard, or catch us on Facebook, or just come get you some. The Medical Center of Dublin is proud to provide families all over Middle Georgia with primary care services that are hard to find under one roof. Call on our team for the highest quality of health care, family medicine, women's health care, and now urgent care open until 8 p.m. Walk-ins are always welcome. If you're sick today, you'll be seen today by one of our physicians. The Medical Center has been serving our community since 1964, providing quality medical care for the entire family. Medical Center, conveniently located on Hillcrest Parkway. Hey, I'm TJ Shuler with Myers Equipment Supply. Come see us for all your sales and service needs. We do lawn and garden, we sell gravely lawnmowers, we sell echo handheld equipment. Pretty much a one-stop shop for your lawn care needs. We also do Can-Am ATVs and side-by-sides, and we got plenty of them. We service all the brands that we sell, of course, and we actually are now starting to service other brands that we don't sell. We are located at 301 North Jefferson Street, and our hours of operation are Monday through Friday from 8 to 5.30, and then Saturdays from 9 to 12. Since 1965, our family has proudly provided physical, occupational, and speech therapy to Dublin, Lawrence County, and surrounding areas. Currently offering physical and occupational therapies, our mission is to work with patients and their families to reach an optimum level of independence. Whether post-sports injury, post-surgery, post-stroke, or just general wear and tear from everyday living, we strive to help you reach your goals and return to what you love doing. Remember, where you go for physical and occupational therapy is your choice. So, when your doctor prescribes it, choose Bass. Townsend Brothers Funeral Home has been serving our community since 1937. Our family will treat your family with grace, dignity, and heartfelt sincerity with an extraordinary level of professionalism. You are our friends, and it is a privilege to take care of you and your loved one in a time of need. Townsend Brothers Funeral Home, family owned and family focused. Meg, if you look at someone who starts with dementia and they have some issues, can they legally sign documents at that point? Yes, yeah, so generally in early stages of a diagnosis, I would say that most individuals still have the legal capacity to sign a document. 
from the attorney perspective, I want to make sure that that individual is aware of the significance of the document, that they're giving authority to someone else to make decisions that normally only they could make. Mm -hmm. And particularly when it revolves around finances, we want to have the utmost trust in that person because when you open up the door to access to those things that only you have access to, yeah. there is certainly room to be taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. But that's really why people need those documents in right, place right. to prevent predators from taking advantage. We have something in place if things go the wrong way, if we're not living to 110 and able to do everything for ourselves independently right. till the very last moment, right. we want to have those in place. Yeah. Um, but yes, I think that it's very common that people in early stages of a diagnosis still have the legal capacity to sign those documents. But earlier is better. We don't want to put it off. Yeah. So. Ultimately, I want everyone to have these documents in place long before anything might happen as far as a diagnosis. But if not, if you or a loved one has gotten a diagnosis, it's not too late. You can go ahead and take steps to put your plan in action so that your loved ones, those around you, know what your wishes are. Yeah, it is paramount. And you know, so many times maybe we think we're in control. We, we really do think we're in control of things, but we're, we're not. If you look at it uh, biblically, if you look at it, you know, honestly, you don't really have any control of a whole lot. Um, so uh, why would you try to hold on to something that, that's fleeting anyway? Um, why wouldn't you be proactive, make a plan, and have that peace of mind? I think it's invaluable, really, to have the peace of mind to know whether it's children, grandchildren, mm. or other trusted people around you. You mm -hmm. mentioned um, sometimes I have clients who do have their accountants serve yeah. in those roles. Yeah. We in the legal terminology would call that a fiduciary. So that is a person who is able to make financial decisions on behalf of someone else and that standard for making those decisions is very high. Um, we want to hold those individuals to a high level of ethical standards. Yeah. And so you mention um, sort of a sense of giving up control, mm -hmm. but also with the peace of mind that knowing that whomever you've listed on that document, you trust at the most high level to make the absolute best decisions, maybe even manage your finances better than you could yourself. Sure. Um, and so <laughs> as long as I'm having those conversations with the clients and their family saying, who do you trust? If today something happened, Who's the first person that comes to mind to say, they're going to make sure my mortgage gets paid, they're going to keep all the lights on, and they're going to follow my wishes for what I want to happen, no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. And that name is usually the person we want on those documents. Yeah, yeah. And, and as you progress, um, you know, you don't worry as much, you know, like you say about the mortgage, you don't worry about, okay, you know, you worry about the big picture of things, about where things are going to go, and and you don't want that family struggle. You've seen it. I've I, I've witnessed it. I've I've heard of, of stories where it just about tears families apart, and sometimes does because there's no directive, there's no plan, and truly, if it's your stuff, you should allocate what you want. Uh, to happen with it and not leave it up to debate. You're absolutely right. It is the number one cause of family strife that I see in my practice mm -hmm. is not having the documents in place to outline your wishes, whether that is while you're living. Um, and so I really want to you know, hammer home that I want you to have a health care directive, I want you to have a power of attorney. Those documents are during your lifetime for people you trust to manage your assets and help you manage your health care if necessary. On the other side of that, that last will and testament or a trust is the document that's going to take over after you pass away. When clients have those documents in place with their wishes clearly outlined and backup plans, if this happens then this, things go so much more smoothly. That's not to say people don't get hurt feelings or maybe feel upset about certain things, but nine times out of 10, they'll respect 
the documents if yeah. you have them in place. Yeah. If you don't have anything in place and it's just been conversations, hmm. that can go wrong very quickly, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah it, it'll almost become a free-for-all, won't it? It can be. Um, it can cause um, strife amongst family members and um, oftentimes clients tell me, well, I know my children will be fine. They're going to do what I want. They're going to get along. But as you mentioned, we're not in control. We don't know how things will shake out. And that, you know, family, that core family unit that was all on the same page at one point, 20, 30 years later, yeah. long after these discussions have taken place, mm -hmm. those people might not be in the same position anymore. Yeah. Um, and so it's really important to have those documents. But if you have a document that you signed 20, 30 years ago, we need to revisit it, update it, make sure it's still in line with your wishes, uh, still in line with the relationships that you have. Mm -hmm. Relationships can change over time, yes. for better or for worse. And so we just want to make sure that our plan is in line with those things as well. Yep. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. You stay with us now. To so many of you who count on us for your prescription medication needs, I'd like to thank you for your years of trust. To those who have yet to choose Tomlinson Pharmacy and Medical Park Pharmacy, I invite you to stop by and discover what makes us different. Medical Park Pharmacy is your family's one-stop destination for their prescription, health, and wellness needs. Our staff greets you with a smile and provides a level of customer care and expert service that truly sets us apart. Realizing your time is valuable, we'll always strive to have your prescriptions filled in minutes, not hours. Have a concern about a new medication? Our pharmacists are available to discuss the instructions and precautions. In addition, Medical Park Pharmacy also stocks a wide array of over-the-counter medications and medical supplies. With the drive through window, free delivery within city limits, and refills through our phone IVR website or mobile phone app, staying healthy has never been so convenient. At Medical Park Pharmacy, local owners Wendell and Wendy Smith provide hands-on service to ensure your satisfaction. We care about earning your business and strive to make you a regular customer. Come experience a difference. Visit Medical Park Pharmacy today. With a history of over 100 years, Farmer's State Bank has built our reputation on neighbors helping neighbors. We faced our trials together and we're celebrating our accomplishments today. The future is bright, so hold fast to your dreams and join us in looking ahead. We are Farmer's State Bank, member FDIC and an equal housing lender. Farmer's State Bank, banking is as easy as FSB. Georgia Dermatology and Skin Cancer Center has been serving Georgia since 1996. Dr. Michael Sharkey, Dr. Amy Blake, along with PAs Tony Lynn Herring, Rachel Westerbrook, Alan Manning, Kelly Toller and Kristen Davis have helped patients with Mohs Skin Care Surgery, routine skin care exams, and general and surgical dermatology. So come see the professionals at Georgia Dermatology and Skin Cancer Center, located in the Air and Office Park in Dublin. Call for an appointment today at 478-275-7546. to mm. talk. Mm. Oh, are those Toyo tires? Oh, man, I love Toyo tires. I am also loving these tires. Let's get you cleaned up. <laughs> Count on the best. Choose Lakes Alignment, located just off Central Drive at East Dublin. Call 272-4230. Dublin's newest and most modern hotel is the Hampton Inn and Suites. Relax and enjoy your stay while near the best in dining, golf courses, and business centers. Start your day with a free hot breakfast. Enjoy our pool, indoor fitness center, and Wi-Fi. Plan your next family reunion, meeting, training session, or social gathering at Hampton Inn and Suites, 103 Travel Center, located by Longhorn and Cracker Barrel. Hampton Inn and Suites by Hilton. Hi, I'm Tom Domney, Dublin Wood Nelson Company. 
We are a full service wholesaler specializing in plumbing, irrigation, and industrial products. We are committed to building long-term relationships with our customers by earning your business every day. With a staff that collectively offers more than 50 years of expertise, our team knows your industry. We're able to answer your questions and are ready to help you get the parts and equipment you need. At Dublin Wynn Nelson, our goal is long-term success of your business. We achieve that goal with a simple commitment, doing things right one customer at a time. Our showroom is complete with the latest styles and fixtures. Stop by and see us at 507 Airport Road or give us a call at 478-272-3585 That's Dublin Wynn Nelson. Welcome you back. It's the Lighthouse Adult Day Care Telethon for Alzheimer's uh, all during the month of July. We're here again with Meg Greer and uh, you're very passionate about what you do. You enjoy what you do. Why? I think it makes a difference. Um, I started practicing law with my uncle 10 years ago and was really given an opportunity to try a lot of things. I'm very thankful for that opportunity. Um, I made my first will for a family and it was very engaging for me. It felt like a puzzle. How can I take all of these wishes that this family has involving the thing that is most important to them, which is their legacy? And how can I help them make sure that comes to fruition? So it started with just making a will, but then as I've practiced over the last 10 years and worked with families, I've just really seen how having the documentation in place can help families. We were just discussing that. If you have it in place, it provides so much peace of mind, yeah. not only for the people creating the wills and the other documents, but also for their family members as well. But what do we do if we don't have the documents? And I've been fortunate enough to be able to find solutions for those families as well. Yeah. Um, it's probably not the ideal scenario. Again, we, we want to have documentation in place, but if we don't, what can we do? And there are legal solutions for that issue. In Georgia, that is called either a conservatorship or a guardianship. Again, I know no one wants a court to have to determine that they're incapacitated and someone be appointed to represent them because they don't have the capacity to make decisions for themselves. But if it gets to that point, if your family member does not have the documentation in place or perhaps maybe they just listed their spouse on everything, um, but we don't have anybody to make those financial decisions or make those health care decisions, then a guardianship over the person will allow someone to make health decisions for someone and a conservatorship over finances will allow someone to make financial decisions for someone. So if you're in that situation in your family, there are solutions, there are ways to, to remedy that so that your loved one can be taken care of. Now one thing that I want to make sure is very clear is that in a guardianship or conservatorship, we generally are not able to execute a new will or a new trust for someone. So there's a fine line there of, of what we can and what we cannot do, but it can make such a huge difference to get things in line so that if someone, ex for example, needs to go into assisted living at some point or needs to go into a nursing home at some point, we have documentation, whether it is, again, through health care directive, power of attorney or will, or whether it's through the court with a guardianship or conservatorship that names someone that can make those decisions and protect that loved one when they're in that most fragile state. Yeah. Okay, uh, Pop's at home now, or mom, and, and they're saying, I've got it all written down on a notepad uh, uh, in, in my drawer. Right. What do you say to that? <laughs> That's very common. I particularly during the last several years saw a lot of homemade estate planning documents and you know I can go over the ins and outs of it needs this many number of witnesses and it needs to be notarized and it needs all of these things to make it valid. But the bottom line is that if you're relying on just a conversation or a written list or even a form that you googled and got off the internet I can almost guarantee you you're setting your family up for more problems. 
It's really better to take the time to meet with an attorney who's experienced in this area to make sure your wishes are A, correctly documented, B, the people who you want in charge are in charge, and see that we have the right legal language in there for Georgia law, because that's where we are. We're in the state of Georgia. We want our documents to abide by Georgia law so that there are no hiccups. I don't need a will for Washington State. I've seen one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need a power of attorney that's valid in Alabama. I need it to be valid in Georgia. So it seems like a little bit of investment and it definitely is um, a, maybe a difficult conversation to have. I'm fully aware of that. Whenever someone comes into my office, I know it took a lot of courage yeah. to start the conversation and I respect that. Um, and then we take the next step and we get your wishes documented correctly so that you don't have to worry and your family doesn't have to worry about what's going to happen next. Yeah. If you think about it, um, if you have a plan, business plan, and it's your business, I mean, it's your, think about it, it's your business to, to make sure that you handle you, your stuff properly. And I say that because there's so much involved. <laughs> but I like for, uh, if I have a plan laid out, and man, I got a plan, I think I got it right here on my legal pad, like mom and pop may have. I want somebody to poke holes in my plan. I want to find somebody who knows more than I know, uh, because in, in, um, in numbers, you know, you, you get wisdom from the proper people, but in numbers there's, there's strength, you know, in making the proper decision. Many counselors bring a wise decision. So you want somebody to poke holes in that plan, don't you? Of course you do. I think so. I mean, I, I think it can sometimes be frustrating when I go into those meetings and <laughs> I, I start off with, what are your goals? Mm. I mean, almost always they say, well, I want to protect my assets. I want my kids, my grandkids, or whoever that loved one is to make sure they benefit from the things I've worked hard for, maybe things I've inherited from family members, land, things like that. So I want those people to get that stuff. Great, that is a great starting point. But then I say, well, what if this? What if that loved one great. became disabled themselves? Uh -huh. What if the unfortunate event that they were to predecease you, pass away before you do, mm -hmm. then what? Yeah. Again, I know these are uncomfortable conversations. I know these are things that we don't like to think about. And I approach every person as a blank slate. There is no one size fits all plan for anybody, for any family. Right. So we want to have those conversations, mm -hmm. go over everything, think of any possible scenario. I like to sort of think of it like throwing a stone in the pond and the ripples that ripple out mm -hmm. or even an onion that has many yeah. layers. Yeah. We start with your core of your priorities of what you want to happen and who you trust to manage it. Mm -hmm. And then maybe we take a few rings out to try to plan for what we know today. Yeah. We can only plan for what we know today. And as you mentioned before, we only know a little <laughs> right. bit of what the grand plan That's is. Right. Yeah. Um, but if we can plan for what we know today, and then we can make sure that every few years we're reviewing our documents to make sure they're updated, mm -hmm. then we're gonna be just fine. Yeah, yeah. I love the questions that, uh, that my accountant asks. I should love the questions that my attorney asks. I should want to know more about what the next steps in my life is going to be and how I uh, can make sure that I'm making the wisest decision for my family, for my loved ones. Why would you not? Uh, let's touch on uh, long-term care. Does it apply any differently for dementia or anything? It can. So we want to go back to that concept of capacity. So I always, my priority is always that the person creating the documents knows what they mean, knows the implication, and trusts, again, the people who they're naming on these documents. Yeah. But absolutely, someone with a diagnosis like Alzheimer's can execute a plan for long-term care planning in anticipation that they might need assisted living or nursing home care one day. Mm. Again. Proactive is best. The sooner we can start and uh, make that plan, the better. But I don't want anyone to ever feel that it's too late. There is always something that can be done 
to try to protect as much as we can, um, whether that means maybe setting aside some funds in the proper way for burial funds for ourselves mm -hmm. and for our loved ones. Mm -hmm. That's something that is an option that's on the table. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to get too much into the weeds with that asset protection planning, but there is always um, an option of that irrevocable trust that we talk about. I talk about it a lot. People probably have heard me mention it a lot, um, but we call it an asset protection trust. It is an irrevocable trust, a trust that you can't change once you make it, but it is an excellent tool for protecting assets so that long term down the road, if we or our loved one needs that high level of care like care in a nursing home, that we've protected those assets. Yeah, yeah. You say it's, it's, you want people to know it's never too late. It's never too early. And you make those changes. You mentioned it earlier. Why not get ahead of You don't know if you're going to live to be 55 or 75 or 105. You do not know. People say, man, I didn't, if I'd known I'd what is old saying? If I know I live this long, I, I'd take a better care yes. of myself. <laughs> I mean, take better care of, of what you have to work with too, and, and make those changes as you go along in life. Don't 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 think uh, you know I'm going to live to at least be eight. I'm going to be the average at least be 75 or 80, 85. You know, before you don't know that. You I don't know I that. see so often. Um, when I just run into people in the community, they're like, well, I don't need a will until I have grandchildren. Yeah. I, that's very common, huh. um, which is totally not the way that I want you thinking about it. Yeah. Um, I really think everybody, and I, I say this wholeheartedly, everybody really over 18, if you have a bank account, if you're working a job and you're putting a little bit of money in the bank, yeah. let's have some documentation in place to make sure that if something happens to you, mm. things stay in order. Yeah. Um, you know, even if it's a temporary time where you're not able to make those decisions um, and you're a young person, maybe you want a parent named as that financial power of attorney mm -hmm. to make sure your bills keep getting paid and you you know you don't your lease doesn't get terminated on your apartment so mm -hmm. i mean honestly whatever stage of life you are in whether you're a young family with young kids whether you are retired and maybe have grandchildren and are um, you know, more in the mindset of, well, I'm on a fixed income now and how do I budget for that and how do I plan for my long-term care and also plan for the future of my family. No matter what stage of life you're in, you can benefit from having these documents in place. Um, I don't say it to scare anyone and I, I don't like to be doom and gloom. I, I really yeah. think of it as such a gift of peace of mind for yourself mm -hmm. and for those around you. Yeah, yeah. And so if you do face, though, uh, someone in your family, you yourself, and you, you begin the, the process of, of a terrible uh, situation of dementia with you or your family, with, with Alzheimer's uh, and the onset, and as scary as it is, you can reach out and get help. You can get great advice. Absolutely. Um, you know, this is an area of the law that I have over the last 10 years really poured my heart and soul into, become very passionate about. Um, but I'm not the only attorney that does it. It doesn't have to be me. Yeah. I just want you to uh, take the steps to get a plan in place so that you feel safe, your family feels safe, and know that if the unexpected does happen, it's not too late. And as you mentioned, it's never too early to be proactive as well. Yeah. Thank you so much, Meg. Thank you for joining us for this uh, segment on uh, the Lighthouse Adult Daycare for Alzheimer's, a uh, telethon we're doing all month long. Great information as always, Meg. Thank you for having me. Progressive Rural Telephone Co-op offers a full range of communication products and services to its members in Lawrence County and surrounding areas. We take pride in being your total communications provider, and we work hard to provide quality services at the best prices. In addition to offering phone service, we provide high-speed internet and digital high-def TV. And we always strive to put our members first. Progressive Rural, your total communications company. Small enough to know you, large enough to serve you. 
ProgressiveTel.com. Call 478-984-4201 or stop by 890 Simpson Avenue in Rents. Progressive Rule Telephone Co-op. Hello, I'm Joy Shepard. I'm the Administrator of Dublin Health and Rehab. I've been here for about six months. Hey, I'm Dot Bailey. I'm Activity Director for Dublin Air Nursing and Rehab. I've uh, been here for a short time, but I'd just like to say we have a super great activity department. If you'd like to volunteer, we have several churches in our community that help us out a lot. And if you'd like to be a part of that, please come out and give us a call or come out and visit and we'd be glad for you to participate in activities. My name's Laura Mullis. I've been with Dublin Air for 10 years. I work with Dr. Dennis Taylor. We uh, manage our patients together. Here at Dublin Air, um, we do admissions for skilled care and we do chronic care management for our long-term residents. He's been a medical director here for a long time and we're in the facility at least three to five days a week for clinical management for uh, acute illness and chronic illness and any problems that they have here. His mother, Dr. Taylor's mother, also was here and my father-in-law is now here too. It's a facility that is a family not only with work, but also with taking care of our loved ones. If you have any questions, you could always give us a call at Dublin Air. Hi, my name is Linda Bailey, and I work here at Dublin Air Healthcare and Rehab, and I work in the social service department, and I have been an employee here for the past five years. I would like to take this opportunity to invite you to come and take a tour of our facility if you are seeking placement for yourself or a family member. We have an excellent therapy department as well as excellent doctors and nursing staff. If you are interested in taking a tour, you do not have to have an appointment. Just feel free to stop by and we have staff that are readily available to assist you.